So the Divine Crusader armor set starts out relatively simple. You need to go to Four Skull Lookout, which is just east of Markov. Take out these bandits, and it's there. There's no associated quest, there's no notebook or anything that I've found anyway. Some of the bandits are named, so that normally means they're a bit harder to take on. And they've got quite a bit of magic spells as well. So I would say you probably need to be a level 30 or 40, or pick them off at range with your favourite bow of choice. And then inside the hideout itself, you'll find the two sets of armour. Job done. Well, no. The Mace of the Crusader is going to give you 22 points of burn damage. And then you've got the armour sets themselves, and there is something you need to know. It's going to drain your stamina massively until you go and visit nine of the shrines in Skyrim. So I'll explain a bit more in a second, but 10% armour bonus... 10% reduction in undead damage when you wear the full set, you're going to get 10 extra points of health, and healing spells are 8% cheaper. The helmet gives you illusion spells at 10% less, restoration spells will also be 8% less to cast, and you get 8% prices better. Now, Shield of the Crusader is pretty good as well, that's going to give you a obviously protection of 40 points, that comes in the form of a ward as well. Then Gauntlet's going to give you Restoration spell costs 8% less and also give you 50% protection against diseases. Then the boots also give you 8% less cost in Restoration spells. So you should find the second set on the body next to it. And it's pretty much got the same perks but it's just a light version of the armor set. Obviously with a different look as well. And I've got to say I prefer the original Crusader look. I don't like the fur on some of these pieces. There is also one bonus though, the Fastened Shield of the Crusader, that can actually be worn on your back. It's like the one shoulder option in the game, and so you can still have a shield equipped as well. So effectively it's going to give you some bonus defence. Here's what the original set looks like with that shield on your back, and it just slots there nicely. And like I said, you can equip another shield with it. And not forgetting on the second body, you should have the Sword of the Crusader, which is going to do fire damage for 22 points as well. And just to show you what it looks like with the other set that I'm not as keen on. Yeah, I really don't like the fur, and I prefer not seeing his face. So, wearing this full set will basically give you a debuff. That means you regenerate your stamina 300% less. It also takes away 100 of your carry weight, so you've got to try and correct that by getting 9 of the blessings. And you can't do it by simply visiting Solitude and activating all 9 of them. But there is a way around this. You can maybe leave the Mace of the Crusader. This only triggered once I equipped that alongside the rest of the gear. So I presume as long as you never actually equip it, you should be okay to use the sword as well as all the other arm pieces. Unless it was a really delayed mission prompt. But once it does trigger, that's it. You will have that boon on you anytime you go to wear this armor set. It does come off immediately as soon as you take off the armor set, so you should be good to go. But if you want to wear the full set and you want to use the Mace of the Crusader, then yeah, you're going to have to go and visit nine of the shrines. And it can't just be, like I said, the nine shrines in solitude. You have to also make sure you don't take any pieces off in between your trips. So one of the first shrines is right next to where you got the armor originally, on a plinth on the edge of this cliff. Pray to Zenadar, and that's Shrine 1. The next one's not too far away. I would suggest you actually go to the hut above the marker rather than this location, as you're going to have to splunk down a huge mountain. And this is the Shrine of Dibella. You can maybe try different shrines. There are lots, some of them have got lots of them all over Skyrim, but the map marker was guiding me to these specific ones. Next, it's to the Guardian Stones on the way to Riverwood. And there should be a mountain that you might have come across. And it's got some bodies of some vampires nearby. And this is it. You can pray to Talos. So you can see it's only registering as that was the first one that I discovered. Because I'd already switched armour pieces. It took me a while to realise this. Then it's across to Rorikstead to the next shrine. And on top of a hill just overlooking the village you'll find Akatosh. Next it's southeast of Dawnstar just here in Urken. I'm terrible at these names. This one was a pain in the ass to get to, it's right on top of the mountain, so maybe one of the other locations might have been better. Eventually you'll come across a skeleton at the top with Julianos. And it's all southeast of Riften to Stender's Beacon, but this one's relatively easy. You'll spawn right next to the tower, and you can pray to Stendar. East of Dawnstar, or southwest of the Winterhold, you'll find the Wayward Pass, and you spawn pretty close to it for the Shrine of Arkay. And then just southwest of Morfall, you've got Cold Rock Pass, 
Although again, obviously this footage I'm showing you here, I ended up jumping down a few cliffs. Eventually you should find it though, opposite the river to Chiron Death. And then just east of Morfall again, you should find, I think that's Morfall anyway, uh, Valmarod. This one's tucked away in the snowy hills and eventually you should find it though, and that is Mara. So obviously I had to go back to the two shrines that I'd taken off the armor pieces because they had reset. Although the map markers don't appear, so do to keep track. If for some reason you swap armors and you want to pick up this quest again, you're going to have to remember which ones you did, otherwise you're going to have to visit all nine of them. So I had to go back over to this one here for Dybala and that was it. That was the final one I needed. And there we go, enjoy the suit. I know it's relegated to the Knights of the Nine or whatever it is, or the Shivery Niles, I think, I do believe. And in previous games, apparently, you weren't able to wear this if you've committed any sort of crimes. But they modified it slightly, so now you've just got a big penalty if you don't go and actually do some of this stuff. Let me know if committing a crime afterwards makes it revert. I don't think so, it doesn't mention anything like that that I've seen. But yeah, it's interesting. I do like this set though, I love the look of it. So I will be rocking it now, I've gone through all that hard work. Okay, and now time for the Lord's Mail, which is also in solitude. So that's why I've included it as part of this, as it's pretty close by. So head up to Dower Castle and you pretty much need to find General Tullius. If you head to the right hand side of his war room in this doorway here, you should find the note that takes you to the next part. The quest is called Gift of Kynareth. So we're going to be heading west of Whiterun, and it's just below Secunda's Kiss. To free the three enemies here, as well as a uh, bear, not going to lie, this was pretty tough, so I did have to use some potions, and I reckon you're probably going to need to be a level 40 or 50. Unless you're super good at sneaking and maybe poisoning or doing it from range. Take them out and you should find a key on one of them. And this will simply open up the chest next door. And that's where you find the Lord's Mail. So it's going to drain 50 points of your health, stamina and magicka while you wear it until you cure it. This is why I included it as part of the Crusader video as I felt they both shared similarities. This one's a lot simpler though, we simply have to go to Solitude. Cleanse it at the shrine and then it reverts to a normal Lord's Mail, which actually takes away 5 points of health from any enemies within proximity, increases your poison resistance by 75% and increases your magic resistance by 17%. And it's pretty cool looking. I gotta say it looks pretty good with the rest of the Crusader gear, even if I do say so myself. Uh, obviously you will lose the bonus if you do mix it up with the Crusader gear against Undead, but ah, who cares about some Undead, I look cool. And there we go, that's it, job done. Two cursed sets of armor for you to go and cleanse, but definitely worth it in my opinion, for the looks of it at least. Until next time, Rat Bags, check out the rest of my guides, and I'll see you later.